Okay, what does a baseball player, a Marine, a school teacher, and a Western swing drummer, what do they all have in common? Well, they have all been achieved by one man. Casey Dickens, the most talked about achievement by this young at heart scholar was that of his drumming days with world known Western swing band leader, Bob Wills. Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys used a variety of instruments and began a genre of music in the 1930s that had never been heard before. The music style was titled Western Swing and it's hard to imagine not one soul has not heard a well-known tune or emulated the famous shout out of Bob Wills cooing at his band with a big ah -ha. That's Bob Wills, folks. Let's check in with one of Bob Wills' famous Texas playboys. My name is Casey Dickens and I was a drummer for the Bob Wills Texas Playboys. Bob Wills was a great innovator. He is the one that put the beat and the swing in what we call Western swing. Bob was the first one to use drums where he mixed drums, fiddles with horns. No one at that time was using horns. In fact, the Grand Ole Opry in those places were not even using drums. He actually is the originator of the, the La Cresto Boys, and he stayed with the La Cresto Boys for two or three years, and he and W. Leo Daniel didn't see eye to eye, so Bob left and went to Waco and formed the Texas Playboys. One night on XEG, they played a song that just, I don't know, it just took a hold of me. I was in junior high, and it was a twin guitar instrumental, and of course, Bob ha ha and ad-libbed on all of his records and everything. And he said, well, here's those boys. And I'm telling you, that instrumental just, as y'all might say, just knocked me out. I'm from the Beaumont Fort Arthur area. I played three years of pro ball in the Kansas City organization. I was fixing to go to AAA when my daddy called me that night and told me that I had gotten my greetings from Uncle Sam. I did not want to go in the Army. I thought I was just about the toughest thing going at that time. So I went in the Marine Corps. So I came out of the Marine Corps and kind of wondering what I was going to do since I saw I wasn't going to make the big league. So I thought, well, I was a pretty good instructor in the Marine Corps. I'll go out here and enroll at Lamar College and teach school. So that's what I did and got my degree and started teaching there in Beaumont. The first time I met Bob was at a dance in Beaumont in 1949. And at that time, Bob was just filling up these dance halls everywhere. His brother, Billy Jack Wills, played drums for him. And I got there early and I asked him, could he possibly introduce me to Bob? So when Bob came in, Billy Jack stopped him and said, I'd like for you to meet a good fan, longtime friend of ours. And he introduced me to Bob, and something happened that night. Of course, I was just sitting there watching Bob's movements, more so than the band. And he leaned down and said, when we take an intermission, let me buy you a Coke. Man, I didn't walk up to that bar to get a Coke. I just was gliding up there. Found out that his hobby was horses. Well, my hobby was horses. From there on out, any time Bob would be in Houston, Beaumont, Port Arthur area, boy, I would be there. I was such a Bob Wills Playboy fan, and I had told Bob if I could just go to work for him trailering his horses. He told me he would never hire me unless I could play something. And I told him, I said, Bob, I, I don't know how to play music. He said, well, you are eat up with rhythm. I thought, well, how hard would it be for me to learn to play drums? Said, go over to Houston and tell Herb Rivington, a great steel man that had worked for Bob for about five years, to fix you up with a set of drums. So I did, and Herbie sold me a used set of drums because I didn't have much money at that time. Went back home and started playing with Bob Wills Records. And I had a good, steady sense of rhythm started working with little bands there around Beaumont. The so one night in Houston, I sat in and I played about three or four tunes and Bob took an intermission and he said, Case, I like what I'm hearing. So consequently, I never did get to be a good technical drummer because I stayed with the beat. 
But evidently, Bob liked it because I stayed with him three and a half years, and that was a pretty long stint for drummers because he was very hard on drummers. I inherited that job as kind of the business manager. I kept up with the contracts, I collected the money, kept up with the bills, and if I come up 10, 15, 20 dollars short at the end of the week, I took that 15 dollars out of my pocket because I, I had a balance sheet and I wanted those credits and debits to match. Bob was real tickled to, to have me doing that. Being a Bob Wills Texas Playboy opened a lot of doors for me. I got jobs from different musicians that I would not have gotten had I not been a playboy. I married my wife, Sue, and we've been married since 1963. We've been very happy. Some of Bob's best tunes are Faded Love, Cherokee Maiden. Oh, fiddles, yeah. And the real song, that, as Bob always said, took them off of hamburgers and put them on steaks was San Antonio Rose. Sold over a million copies way back in 1939 or 40. A lot of us that were still around in the 70s and 80s and even up to now, we still get together. I am 78 and I moved to Hideaway, Texas. That's right out of Tyler. And I can walk out my backyard and I'll walk about 100, 150 yards and tee off on the number one fairway. And I really enjoy golf. I decided I either was gonna buy another horse or a motorcycle, since you don't have to feed a motorcycle except when you ride it. So I gave up the horse for horsepower on a motorcycle. I've got over a thousand hours of Bob Wills albums, Bob Wills tapes, and I spend a lot of time here in this music room reliving my past. That stint on Bob Wills band was one of the highlights of my career. As long as I'm living, I'm going to come out here and relive my Bob Wills days by listening to the music and looking at my pictures. Because of his lack of hitting talent, Casey proudly boasts that Baseball Hall of Famer Ted Williams said he had a million dollar talent with a 10 cent brain. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> 